Hello everybody and welcome back to another Star Wars Battlefront video. Before we get started, I wanted to let you all know that I have created an Instagram for this channel. So if you want to give me a follow, there is an image of my Instagram account up on the screen right now. And you can give me a follow on Instagram. I will try to be as active as possible, as well as posting reminders of my uploads on my feed. But now let's get on to the Star Wars Battlefront gameplay. Hello everybody and welcome to another Star Wars Battlefront video. In this video we are playing Infiltration, which is the multi-stage game mode set on the tropical planet of Scarif added in the Rogue One Scarif DLC. This is a new mode that accompanies uh, the movie Rogue One and it is an intense multi-stage game mode that has players battling across three phases of varying experiences and objectives from space among U-Wings and Star Destroyers to creating a distraction for your allies on the beachheads of Scarif. This is one of my personal favorite game modes in the game. Actually, it is my personal favorite game mode in the game. I love Rogue One, and whenever I get bored, this is my go-to... Well, the Rogue One Scarif DLC is my go-to, um... game to play. Now I'm going to go over every single stage of Infiltration and then I will show you a full game of it so you know what the games are like if you have never played before. So stage 1 of Infiltration is called The Approach and stage 1 starts off in space with an intense dogfighting phase. The rebels must attempt to escort a U-Wing with the help from Corvettes through a blockade of Star Destroyers to reach the Shield Gate. If successful, a team of rebels will pass through the Shield Gate and land onto the planet of Scarif below. It starts off with one U-Wing per round. When that U-Wing dies, another will spawn, but as the timer ticks lower and lower, it can go up to two, three, and at the most there will be four U-Wings at once you have to protect. And it's very rare the Rebels ever really lose this round, because one of the four U-Wings is, is bound to get through. This stage of infiltration features frantic dogfighting and trick piloting as Rebels try to navigate the narrow pathway between stu two Star Destroyers. Excuse me. Fans will get a close-up look at some of the newest starfighters featured in the upcoming Rogue One A Star Wars Story. But don't let the ships distract you, you'll need to focus and work together to get through the shield gate. So this is very similar to the role of the movie, Shield Gate. The rebels have to get through it so they can attack Scarif. It's very similar to the movie, of course it's a little different because this came out before the movie and the people who worked on it didn't get to see the movie beforehand, so I think this did a very good job of telling a different kind of story while maintaining the same Rogue One feel. After the Rebels pass through the shield gate, Phase 2 begins. Phase 2 is called the Distraction, and having successfully passed through the shield gate, the Rebels now find themselves on the offensive on the surface of Scarif. In this stage, the Rebels are looking to create a distraction to draw Imperial attention away from the real objective. To achieve this, the Rebels are aiming to blow up one of two cargo ships as they attempt to confuse Imperial forces. This is also very similar to Rogue One, where not really their goal was to blow up a cargo ship, but our cargo ship certainly did explode, and Bodhi Rook was on that cargo ship, and he unfortunately passed away. In an effort to stifle the Rebel advance, the Empire can call upon the Director of Advanced Weapons Research, Orson Krennic, to direct their forces on the ground. He is accompanied by his Imperial Death Troopers as they attempt to halt the Rebel advance. Additionally, the Imperials can call on TIE Strikers to rain down fire from above. To help counter this, the Rebels will have U-Wing backup available in the form of a mobile weapons platform. Circling the battlefield, the U-Wing will help to suppress the Imperials. So like the AT-AT Walker in Walker Assault, the U-Wing is on a track circling above the battlefield of Scarif. It is like a helicopter with a big gun on the side of it. You're just firing down your machine gun onto the surface of Scarif, taking out stormtroopers, and the TIE Strikers are not flyable, they are a power-up, and when used, it will fly off and do strafing runs across Scarif and killing the Rebels. Once one of the two cargo ships are destroyed, 
phase three of infiltration will begin. This is called the extraction, and this is where the rebels will have to get data tapes off the surface of Scarif back to their U-wings. So after the destruction of a cargo ship, the rebels now find themselves in position to steal information from the Empire. All they need to do is make it back to their U-wing in order to escape. In an effort to steal this information and make a getaway, Jin Erso can be called on to rally the rebel forces. So the Empire gets Krennic in the second phase, and the Rebellion gets Jin in the third phase. But if, let's say, Director Krennic survives the second phase, he still will not be playable in the third phase. So it's kind of unfortunate. I, I'd like Jin and Krennic to be able to fight each other, but I guess it's just kind of a balancing, a balancing effort. Thankfully, the Imperials will be able to leverage their heavy-handed might and technology against Rebel forces to assist in stopping them from stealing this information. The Rebels now face heavy blaster fire as they storm across the tropical landscape back to the safety of their U-Wing with the hope of escaping from Scarif. So the double ground stages of infiltration offer a very dynamic and intense cat and mouse style of play as the Empire is on the attack in the third phase while the Rebel is on the attack in the second phase and vice versa. It's very hectic. It's a very hectic game mode. As the Rebels try to steal the information, it gives players a unique and dangerous battle environment. Everything's changing with one phase. The objectives are one thing, and then they're completely different in the next, and there's a lot of running and moving across the battlefield. It's very Rogue One-like. It's a very war-like game mode in a war-based game. So I will now leave you with a full round of infiltration so you can see what the game is like. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It is greatly appreciated. And until the next video, may the Force be with you. All wings, the shield gate will only be open for a short period. We need to push past the Imperial defenses and make it down to the planet's surface. vulnerable. Get to the planet's surface. on the ground, we need to distract the Imperials so our team can advance on their objective. Rebel troops, you need 
to fight your way towards the rail speeder station. Distract the Imperials by planting an explosive device on one of their cargo ships. Our team need us to create a diversion. Rig a cargo ship with explosives to draw Imperial troops away from their location. Must go off. Do not let the Imperials near it. Director Orson Krennic is in the vicinity. Targeting him could deal a real blow to the Empire. to charge on an Imperial cargo ship. We need to divert the Imperials away from our team. We need that charge to go off. Do not let the Imperials near it. Engage the stormtroopers and reset our device. Do not let the Imperials disarm your explosive charge.
got this under control. Make sure those charges go off. The cargo ship is up in flames. That should distract the Imperials while our team goes to work. Move towards the rail speeder station and secure the area. Extraction point, hurry it up. Drop the date, please. You need to secure it again. Drop the data tank. We need to push the Imperials back and retrieve it again. 